Welcome, Mr. Fareed Amin. Thank you. Uh, you are Chair of Policy and Planning Committee, the Canada Ghana Chamber of Commerce. Mr. Amin will be sharing points of view from the Canadian perspective, the role of the Policy and Planning Committee in it initiatives to inform on the work of the Chamber to connect members within the subsectors with key leaders and highlight trade and investment opportunities. Tell us, Mr. Amin, your role as Chair of the Policy and Planning Committee and as board member. So once again, thank you, Paul. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here and, and thanks for this opportunity to talk a bit about the Canada Guyana Chamber of Commerce and in particular, the Policy and Planning Committee. Um, the Policy and Planning Committee is basically a committee to try and bring uh, value added uh, to our membership. Um, we are interested in ensuring that our membership understand the importance of Guyana and investing in Guyana and that Guyana is open for business and looking for ways to enhance bilateral uh, trade and investment. So for example, we're looking at um, identifying policy issues that might impact or impede to some extent the relationship, the trade and investment relationship between Guyana and Canada, uh, to look at informing our members about how to set up a business uh, in Guyana, making it easy for them, providing perhaps a concierge approach uh, to the setting up of business through our local Canada Guyana Chamber of Commerce office uh, in Guyana. So the Policy and Planning Committee is in effect a committee to monitor what's happening on the investment side, the business climate side, bringing those uh, intelligence to our membership and the wider audience, those who are interested in trade and investment in Guyana, and help them navigate the complexities of doing business both in Guyana and in Canada. And I think that strategic impactment is working well thus far. How would you answer to that? I, I think so. I mean, I, I think finally, if I can use that term, Guyana is getting attention and Guyana is open for business. Uh, when you think about South America, you don't often think about Guyana. And with the discovery of oil and gas, Guyana has, to some extent, not, not to some extent, to a large extent, is now on the economic landscape. landscape. Guyana has arrived. Guyana is open for business. And our job at the Chamber is to identify opportunities to help navigate and help improve the business opportunities between Canada and Guyana. I should hasten to add that this is a bilateral relationship. So we are interested in exposing our Canadian uh, members to what's happening in Guyana, but equally, we are interested in exposing our Guyanese member to what's happening in Canada to build partnerships, to facilitate access to capital, to facilitate access to knowledge transfer. So we're looking for those sweet spots, those opportunities, providing connections and partnerships for those opportunities, and hopefully trying to make a difference to enhance trade and investment Great. between our two countries. And just to reiterate, persons may ask why Guyana and why should Canadians invest here? That's a really, really important question, and I think it's also a very relevant question. There are a number of reasons, uh, Paul. Uh, there's lots of synergies between Guyana and Canada. Both are English-speaking uh, countries, and both are part of the Commonwealth. We share some similar values on, on governance, on transparency. Um, so there, besides the economic opportunity, there's some foundation in uh, issues that are important to both countries. Having said that, the, um, the, uh, Guyana is, is one of the fastest growing economies in the world. So that in itself uh, should uh, be of interest to uh, Canadians who are looking uh, for investment uh, in Guyana. And the opportunities, in my view, are limitless not only in oil and gas, but also in agribusiness, in tourism, in clean tech, in advanced manufacturing, uh, in the tourism and the restaurant and the service industries. There's a lot of, of, of synergies and opportunities that I think we can try and identify for membership between Guyana and Canada. Guyana is English speaking and so is Canada. Uh, we're only a short five or six hours uh, dry, uh, plane ride. Uh, from, from Toronto in particular uh, to Georgetown. Um, we're in the same hemisphere, you know, in, during most of the years, the same time zones. So lots of, of, of um, reasons why I think Canadians should look at uh, any, Guyana and vice versa. Any other added areas of interest to Canadian investors, would you say? Well, I mean, I think mining is one, and we've, uh, Canadians have had a long-standing, a long history of mining investment in uh, in Guyana, so I think that's an, an area of growth, of potential growth. Uh, clean tech, 
uh, Canada, as you know, uh, has a uh, emphasis on on climate change and green energy. Um, Canada and Guyana, through the Low Carbon Development Strategy, has identified a number of areas where it's very, very interested in clean technology and advancing, quote unquote, the green agenda. Um, that is also an area that is ripe for investment uh, between the two countries, not only investment in terms of money and human resources, but also knowledge transfer. I mean, I look at the agri-business uh, in Guyana, I look at uh, manufacturing, the value-added manufacturing, and think there is so much that both countries can offer each other to help in the growth and development uh, of uh, both Guyana and, uh, and Canada. Any environmental policies in the same vein you found interesting that Guyana has? Absolutely. Um, you know, Ontario, Canada's largest province, has, had, has always had an emphasis on solar energy and alternative green energy. Um, looking, I mean, we uh, in, in Ontario, we shut down all our coal-fired generating plants. Uh, so th that doesn't exist in Canada anymore. Um, so that in itself is an opportunity to look at how we might use photovoltaic um, as an investment strategy to help push the um, alternative energy um, uh, initiatives in, in Guyana. Hydropower, I know, is also an important uh, component of the power mix uh, in Guyana. Um, so those are all um, identify a few areas that, um, on the energy side, of course, there's a lot of uh, clean tech on the advanced manufacturing side. We're looking at advance, uh, in Canada advancing the whole electric vehicle uh, strategy, um, having um, the ability to, to develop and build batteries in, uh, in Ontario. So some of that, I think, goes beyond the climate change or energy sector into the advanced manufacturing and the automotive and transportation sector as well. Great. Mr. Amin, how would you assess the beneficial areas of collaborations with Guyanese enterprises? I mean, I, I think the time is ripe. Uh, and, and I said at, at the opening that Guyana is open for, for business. Um, I think the government, this government, Guyana government, has clearly identified the need uh, for capital, for human resources, for investment. And more and more, I believe, uh, the uh, Guyana government is making it easy, easier, I think, uh, for Canadians to come and invest um, in, in Guyana by providing uh, incentives, uh, by ensuring the business climate. And this is a, a, this is a, a really important issue. Uh, investors like certainty. Uh, and I think what we're seeing in Guyana, that level of certainty within the business climate uh, that is pleasing to investors. And of course, there's also a need for um, uh, stability and transparency and good governance. Those are the kind of things that investors look at beyond the economic opportunities. And I think Guyana is, is well uh, set uh, to address and deal with some of those uh, issues. Uh, and I'm sure you're thinking about the building capacity of local groups like women, indigenous peoples, and youth and enterprises. You want to elaborate a little bit? That, that, that? is that is so important. And, and I think the issue of ensuring that economic benefit uh, triples down to the entire population, regardless of where you live, whether you live in the northernmost point of Guyana or in the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the most uh, uh, southerly area. Uh, the same thing in Canada, from coast to coast to coast. We need to ensure that the economic benefits of the economic transformation gets to uh, the entire population, including the indigenous uh, population. And, and here again, I mean, I think there's a, a tremendous opportunity to collaborate on economic development and inclusion and inclusiveness to, to bring in the indigenous population into the economic, social and political agenda. Uh, when it comes to, to gender, I mean, I think that both countries, Canada it has make, made it a preference uh, to uh, ensure that there is gender parity in many of the things that we do. Um, and I think um, we need to ensure that women, and I, I'm very pleased to report that a number of initiatives supported by the Chamber to enhance and include women entrepreneurs to make sure that they have uh, opportunities similar uh, to the male counterparts to participate in an effective way in that economic development agenda. Great. Partnerships that are essential to bilateral and multilateral trade and investment engagements. Yeah, and, we, and we've seen some of it, right? I mean, I, I think uh, mo most of the successful investment worldwide, globally, re rely on local expertise. So you may, you may have an investor coming from outside, but an individual doesn't necessarily understand the local nuances. And I think, you know, I don't want to identify 
uh, partnerships uh, so as not to compromise uh, individuals who are engaged in it. But we, there are some established partnerships right now between Canadian companies and Guyanese companies that are making significant inroads because they each bring certain strengths to the table and can leverage that strength to the benefit of the Guyanese people. Bolsters the national economy. Isn't absolutely, it? absolutely. Yeah. What about competitiveness? It improves, I think. Absolutely, uh, yeah. In terms of the yeah. Guyana private sector. That's that's right, and Guyana has a very thriving, very engaged, and very vibrant private sector. And again, that's one of the ingredients that uh, uh, foreign investors are, are looking for. And I think that partnership, as I mentioned earlier, you can bring each bring a certain uh, approach and skill to the table and think about leveraging that. I always keep saying that none of us is as strong as all of us. Right, right. Uh, so bringing people together, forging the, do, do, those uh, coalition in a respectful way, understanding each other's needs, making sure that it is a win-win situation are all ingredients that can lead to a very successful partnership. Right. Uh, Mr. Amen, why does it matter to getting established in the Guyana market? How can the chamber assist? Well, I mean, the Chamber is doing a lot of work, although despite our relatively recent, relative recent establishment, uh, we've been able to sort of uh, penetrate both the Canadian and the, the Guyanese uh, private sector uh, through uh, information that uh, we send out to our members. I mentioned earlier, we're looking at uh, accelerating and improving the number of monthly initiatives that we have with our members. We're looking at having seminars on an ongoing basis. Uh, you saw recently the Minister, uh, Minister Ng from Canada was here um, and, and uh, was, in, was working with the government and the government has signed a memorandum of understanding. Um, so the Chamber is uh, at a multilateral level working to increase awareness of Guyana increase information on how to establish and do business in Guyana. And connects with Canadians as well who are here. Exactly, exactly. The diaspora is an important component of the development agenda. And um, in fact, many of us in, who are Canadian directors are members of the diaspora, at least two of us are. Uh, but we also have um, directors uh, who are uh, Canadians by birth and, um, and they can bring that, uh, that knowledge also uh, to bear on the, on the conversations we're having. So persons desiring to enter the market, they can email? Absolutely, the they can email the, uh, the Chamber. We have a website and I think it's, it's easy to, uh, to identify. It's the Canada Guy and the Chamber of Commerce website and the email address is info at uh, cgcc.gy, which is the abbreviation, abbreviation of the Canada Guy and the Chamber of Commerce. And our um, CEO, uh, Trina Butts, would be more than happy uh, to engage them and provide them uh, with information. And as I mentioned earlier, Paul, we are both in Canada and we have resources in Guyana as well. Uh, so anyone interested, I'd encourage them to go on our website, send us an email. Uh, we, are, uh, we actively are on social media um, and uh, we, will, we can and, and will communicate uh, through those media on a continuous basis to make, it, um, um, to make our membership and the wider audience aware of the activities of the chamber. you thus far with the membership? I'm very impressed. I mean, we had significant growth uh, in, our, in our membership. And what impresses me most is not just in numbers, it's the level of engagement. And our CEO can, can attest to this. You know, almost every single day we're getting uh, information from our membership on partnerships that they have signed or investment opportunities that they are negotiating or has just concluded. So that's the benefit and that's the sweet spot of the Chamber is not only to bring people together and share information, but the fruits of that is an actual deal uh, between Canada and Guyana and I think uh, we're seeing that, if not on a daily basis, at least uh, um, you know, on, a, on a frequency that I think we're satisfied with at, at this stage. Good, Mr. Fareed Amin, thanks very much for the insightful information. Thank you very much Thank and thanks much. for the opportunity. Take care.